Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is obviously continuing with the uh, the carburetors from the Triumph Sprint 900. Now, uh, in the last episode, what I did was I stripped them all down and cleaned them. Um, in this episode, what we're going to be doing, putting them all back together again, um, ready to uh, ready to go back onto the bike. Now, before we begin, what I've done, um, I've done a couple of lovely little things since that video. I've actually torn them all apart. Um, because what I realised in the uh, in the rebuild kit, there is actually new seals for the um, for the fuel um, unions, which sit in here, as you can see. So I thought, well, as I've got the new seals, I may as well pull them apart and um, and replace them. The other thing I did, which uh, I didn't do in the last video, mainly because I'm a blended, um, a flaming idiot, is I've actually removed the the pilot screws. Um, and the choke plungers. Um, I don't know why I didn't do it. I just it just didn't occur. So um, I realised afterwards that I hadn't done that. Um, so I hadn't filmed that. But um, obviously you'll see me put them back in. Um, there is uh, something that's marginally important with the uh, with the pilot screws that we do need to do when we reinstall them. So I'll talk about that at that time. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the aforementioned fuel union seals. Um, I'll pop them out using my little scriber. As you can see, they're actually got a bit of a split in them anyway. So these, uh, these were due. There's one, there's four in total. Obviously the middle one has two because um, there's what the union on each side. Come on, let you come. A little bit of uh, a little bit of oxidation coming out of there. And the last one. There we go. Right, what I'm going to do, I'll um, get some cleaning solution. I'll give the in, uh, the inside of those uh, a good clean up before we uh, before we install the uh, seals, and then I'll bring you back in a second. Okay, so they're all uh, they're all nicely cleaned out, and um, what I need to do now is fit me four little seals. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get me red rubber grease and just give them a little dab. I'm going to go crazy with it. Just a little dab just to keep them nice and pliable and probably help to seat them in the actual carburetors themselves and there we are that popped in there really really nicely Same for this one I'm not going mental don't don't go daft just a little little bit just to help ease them home He's going one way, the opening that side is obviously wider than the opening that side. I mean the right way around. Last one. And there we go. Okay, right. Put the lid on my grease. Now, what we need to do now is obviously fit the unions back in like so and they all go together like that these ones here go at the bottom down here and these are the simply uh, simply breathers they're, bre they're carburetor breathers and they don't require any seals the 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 actual housing itself is actually quite uh, quite rubbery so pop those on and then pop them Together, just like so okay now what I'm going to do next is look at the choke assembly so the choke assembly 
basically fits in here and as you can see there's the opening so as the choke is operated you can see it closes and opens that port and allows obviously fuel in and out via this pipe um, and from that little nozzle there so as you uh, operate the choke it allows more fuel through and um, obviously raises the rpm um, so that you can get the bike up to temp quicker so what i need to do obviously is um reinstall it all so um it goes together basically like so so like that so what we need to do is obviously pop it back in its housing like so and then this little collar obviously you squeeze it together to remove it and you can see just here either side you can see the little slots where it engages and again what i'm going to do because there is a little rubber seal on it is i'm just going to give it a little dab of red rubber grease this will also help you um fit it onto the carburetor because it can be a bit of a bugger to seat um but a little bit of red rubber grease will will help uh, it doesn't matter if we go a bit too crazy on this because what we'll do is we'll just wipe off any excess and then what we'll do is get it in the right place make sure it's engaging and pop her in just like so and make sure she operates against the spring and returns as she should right there we are what i'll do i'll get the other two in and then uh, we'll uh, look at the rest of the carbs right then so that's all the uh, choke plungers in and they're all operating just as they should okay what we want to do next uh, next is we want to look at putting the jets back in before we can put the jets back in we need to put the um the slide block uh back in because the uh, the needle jet um or the or the emulsion tube or whatever you want to call it obviously fits inside like like so so we need to fit this first before we fit the uh, before we fit the emulsion tube um in the kit there is a seal for it let me find it right. loads of little bags bags coming out of me Ears. Right, there's one for each carburetor. So if I tip all of these out onto my tissue, just like so, we should be good. Right, the one for this is this one. And we fit it just like so. And then we are, that's, uh, that's that fitted. Um, what we can do now is fit the emulsion tube. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to show on the video or not, but right at the top, I don't know if you can see it, there's like a little tiny peg that sticks out. I did mention this in the last video, there's a little peg that sticks out which you can't see around the rest of the circumference but right there it's at about right at the top at the six o'clock position hopefully you can see it i'm not sure whether it's in focus or not um, but you can i can just about make it out on the little screen on my camera so hopefully you guys can too now what that is um that's an engagement pin for the uh, the emulsion tube basically it's to stop this rotating when you're trying to screw things into it like like the main jet for example so that flat there has to engage on that little peg so when we uh, when we drop it in we've obviously got to drop it in in the right orientation and it's not as easy as you'd think so what I need to do is obviously have 12 fingers get it in like so ensuring that i've got the orientation correct which i haven't at the moment so let me turn it i think that's it i think we're good and there we are basically dropped in 
So we're uh, we're fully seated, and then we're ready for the main jet to go on. If um, if you don't get the orientation right, you'll find it won't seat, obviously. And you may, if if you weren't aware that that um, little nub was there, you, you you could force it and damage something. So don't force it. If it's not going in with a carburetor, then uh, you know something's obviously not ori orientated correctly, or something's not correct. So uh, there we are. So we can uh, now look at the jets. Okay, what we're going to look at next is the pilot screw. The pilot screw lives here and as you can see it's on the air side of the carburetor. If the pilot screw is on the fuel side then generally it, the, the screw meters the fuel. It's on the air side, as a general rule, meters air. So anyway, I digress. Here's the pilot screw and as you can see what it'll do, it'll engage in the hole and the further in or out it is, the, uh, the wider the aperture to allow more or less air in. And what we need to do is we need to fit the tiny little o-ring out of the kit. There is a tiny little washer as well that goes over the top. And then this little spring. So what we need to do is get all of this in here. And tighten her up. Now, as I said earlier, there's something specific we need to do with these, and that is to set them at the correct setting. Now, there's two settings for these carburetors, one for um, cylinders one and three, and a different setting for cylinder two. Now, the setting is for one and three, seated like so, so that is fully seated, and then out two turns. So, what I need to do is go out two turns, that's half, one, one and a half, two. So that setting, that setting for that pilot screw is as it says in the manual, so I'm happy with that, so we can leave that one alone. What I'll do when I do the other two, um, obviously cylinder one and three need to be the same, but cylinder two is actually two and a quarter turns out. Um, that's the only difference. Other than that, it's identical in every respect. Okay, let's move on. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to fit the main jet. Now the main jet just goes into the top of the emulsion tube, just like so. Pop her in, and then when I find the right screwdriver, which is that one, just nip it up lightly. It doesn't need to be graunched in, because if you graunch it in, you'll just mar up the jet, and then um, it'll be no use to anybody. So there we go. Lightly fitted. Um, doesn't need to be. Uh, don't need to go crazy with it. Um, that's more than adequate. Next is the pilot jet. The pilot jet drops down into there and then using a suitable screwdriver just seat it just like so that's plenty again don't need to hang on it and um, that's more than more than adequate next step is to fit the float assembly now the float assembly fits on just like so it goes over the over the choke nozzle for the choke circuit and sits in just like that and it's basically held in place by its seals um, so what we need to do is fit the two seals to the float assembly before i fit them what i'm going to do i'm going to give them a light um coating of red rubber grease because it will help when it comes to actually seating the float onto the carburetor because they um they can be a bit of a pain to get them to you know push on and you do, if you push on it too hard you can damage the float so that's one I'm not going crazy with it, just a light, just a light coat. And there we go, get that off my fingers. And there we are. Right, next, what we need to do, just pop it over the top, like so. That one pops in at the front, like so. And the back one at the back for the fuel inlet, like that. And that's as simple as it is. It really is that easy. There's nothing, no, uh, there's no, no screws or anything holding that in place, and it just sits in like so. Right. Next thing we need to do before we put the cap, uh, the um, the actual bowl itself on, 
is we need to set the float height to ensure that the uh, um, fuel coming in is uh, coming in at the right rate so that uh, we're not either flooding the bike or starving at fuel. Right then, setting the float height. Um, obviously you need to get the, the, uh, the, the float height at the specs um, section of the manual. But for this, uh, for this particular model, um, it's 14.5 millimeters. Now, what we need to do is obviously we need to um, have the, uh, the inlet closed, um, but the, uh, the float relaxed. Now, as you can see, it closes down and then that's it basically sat in the closed position. Do not compress it like that against its spring. Just leave it in its relaxed position like so. And then what we're doing is we're measuring the bottom of the float to the gasket face. And in this, on this model, 14.5 millimeters. And as you can see, hopefully in this, it's set exactly 14.5 millimeters. So there's actually no adjustment required to these. Um, obviously, I, when I took them off, I wasn't uh, manhandling them around and I haven't adjusted uh, the settings at all. So they, they are perfectly set and I'm happy that, um, that they are correct. Right then, next stage, what we need to do, fit the float bowl. Here's the new gasket for the float bowl. And obviously it'll only go on one way. So pop it into its little groove. It does have some little notches all the way around, all the way around the gasket that should hold it in place. You can see uh, on the mouldings the little notches, once they're in, it grips on the inside of the slot and holds it where it's supposed to be, which is quite handy. And then it's simply a case of fitting it back onto the carburetor body. And then getting our screws, which I put to one side. And refitting them. And then nip them up. Nice and snug, not obviously to the point where we're stripping them out. Okay, that's the bottom of the carb done. Right, let's have a look at the top. So, here we've got the slide. As you can see, I've got these absolutely beautiful. They were uh, they had um, a lot of uh, like carbon build up uh, on them, which was preventing, which actually did help um, stop me getting them out. If you uh, recall in the last episode, it was made them really, really difficult to go. But I've cleaned them up and they've come out absolutely lovely. The, uh, the diaphragms are nice, There's, I've checked them all out as well, there's no tears in the diaphragms whatsoever, so they're all good to go back together. Right, the uh, needle, what we need to do is reassemble it. Now, you will recall from the last video that the circlip, which I really struggled to pick up then, was on the second slot from the bottom. So we'll pop that back on where it came from. And then we've got the two plastic spacers, just like so. And then that will fit inside like so. There. Now, what we can do, we can fit this back into the carburetor making sure the needle goes down into the emulsion tube. And there we go. Now, get the diaphragm fully seated into its groove all the way around. Then the spring goes in like so. And then importantly, the last of the seals out of the kit sits just there and that is for the vacuum takeoff then the little lug on the inside of the cap oops just drop the uh, the seal make sure it stays on there the uh, the little lug on the inside of the cap goes on top of the spring
and then we close it down and then take our screws one and two Again, don't grolly them, they don't need to be, they just need to be nipped. And there we go. Beautiful. And there we are, that is that carburetor rebuilt. Now, what I have got, I have um, found a couple of these little spring clips uh, because they were all missing off of all the carburetors. And if you recall, um, when we stripped them down, we found a stupid bit of pipe with a bolt in it. And I've actually gone out and got the correct um, caps. These are actually Triumph parts. Um, so I've got the correct caps to go on the other two. Uh, and obviously this one is the one that has the, um, the vacuum takeoff. So um, I'll remember that when we come to uh, assemble the whole lot together. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to put the other two carbs together exactly the same way that I've just done with this one. And then I'll bring you back in when we're going to um, assemble the lot together as, uh, as one unit. So I'll see you in a second. Right, there we are. As you can see, all of them are together. Um, the only thing I've got to do on this last one is put the float bowl on, but I just want to discuss something very, very quickly. Um, whilst the, uh, this cylinder, sorry, this carburetor, should I say, um, the, the float height was set perfectly well, these other two actually did require an adjustment. Um, it's, it's good now, uh, 14 and a half, but in order to make the adjustment, all it is is a simple case of bending this little tab here down will take the um, the float up or up takes the float down. So it's just a case of gently bending that. Um, it doesn't actually take a lot to bend it. Um, it's uh, very, very, uh, very, very thin um, and it, it's easily bent. So um, yeah, it's just a case of bending it down and it will bring the float height up um, to the level you want it to be. It's really, really that easy. Um, and obviously just make sure that they're they're set correctly because if they're not then you'll um you uh, you may have fueling issues um right let's get this gasket on correctly seated and there we go let's get the screws on There we go. Okay, so now what we need to do is obviously um, reassemble them back together again. Um, we've got a few brackets. That's the um, the rod for the for the choke, and these two here are the ones that actually hold the the, uh, the three carburetors together. And then lastly, um, oops, what we've got is the idle speed adjuster and that's the screw for that. So we'll leave that to one side for the moment. It's worth bearing in mind, obviously, that one of the float bowls is different to the others because it's got the uh, the hole for the screw for the, um, for the idle speed adjuster. So obviously make sure you get the right one. Now, in order to get these together, obviously what we need to do is we need to make sure we've got all the linkages engaged um, with each other, uh, otherwise they won't all open. And you've got a little paddle here, and what it does is it sits in here behind that behind that spring in that gap that i've just created that's basically where it's got to fit so what we need to do is we need to link these together making sure that the fuel lines and the um and the uh the um <sighs> vacuum lines um obviously um engage with each other so 
what we need to do is pop them together just kind of like half fit them together and then pull down on that spring like that oh it's popped out it's quite awkward another job where you need 12 ands and then we are that's those ones together and as you can see when i operate the linkage it operates both carburetors now same on this one we need to pop them together and on this one oops do the same again just pull the spring back and there we go and they're in and if I operate the linkage all three of them open and there we go right so the first of the linkages goes under here like so so let me grab my screws and pop them all in um, it's worth noting actually when I um, undid all these screws I had to use my impact driver to get them out because they were so so tight um, impact driver made light work of in mind um, it's just this this jobber here just put it on give it a good whack on the top of the hammer and it shocks them off uh, it take, put, took a good two or three uh, two or three whacks but they all came out absolutely beautifully um, there was absolutely no way I was going to get them out without the use of an impact driver they, they were just so in there and all I'd have done is rounded out the heads so the uh, the impact the impact driver came into its own. There we go. Nip, nip. Again, I'm not leaning on them. I'm just nipping them all up. And there we go. Right. Next ones is get that out of the way. Breathers in the way. Right, and there we go. That one goes on there like so. And again. Get the screws in. Go on, get in there, get started. probably worth mentioning that these screws are actually Japanese industrial standard they're not Phillips um, so use a JAS screwdriver to uh, fit and remove them is the carburetors back reassembled now what we need to do next is um, fit the uh, actuator for the choke now each of the choke plungers has a little slot in it which is what these engage with and then these little plastic collars um, engage into these little slots just here so what we need to do is make sure we get the orientation correct first 
um, which that wasn't so it goes like that there we go so get each of the, the plungers engaged like that and then each of these there's two of them one there they simply pop in like that and hold it in place and there we go that is all there is to it now um, as I said before what I've got here is I've got two of these little vacuum takeoffs so these are actually these are genuine triumph but they look slightly different from the the ones I took off they're just an interference fit onto there one come on get on and two and there we go simple as that that one is the one that we take the, va uh, the, the vacuum takeoff goes up to the fuel cock and there we are last thing we need to do is refit the um the uh idle speed um adjuster now there is a spring for it which i can't find right now so what i need to do is um i'll bring you back in a second once i found it i've got it it's probably in my little box bring it back in a sec <laughs> it was in my little box pop it back on there and then what we need to do is just screw it in into here just screw it in what i'm going to do i'm just going to do it until it touches the throttle linkage um, and then what we can do is we can make any adjustments on the bike as necessary come on get on not left handed Yeah, I'm just going to get it up to touch, like so. There we go. Right. Next, we just need to put it on there. Get the screw in place. We need screwdriver and screw it down. There we are. That is the carburetors fully cleaned and rebuilt. And as as I'm sure you'll agree, they look a darn sight nicer than they did when they came off. Obviously, I've got all the pipe work here as well. All the pipe work which I removed previously. I've got the fuel lines, the vacuum lines. Um, and all that good stuff to go back on but we'll put them on um, when we get back on the bike anyway hopefully you uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video um, or should I say series of videos what I'm going to do now is obviously go back to um, the servicing videos because the carburetors were removed in order to remove the, uh, the the air box from the bike so what we can do now is we can refit the air box and the carburetors and um, get uh, get on with the um, get on with the servicing um, once these are on obviously what they'll need is um, they'll need balancing and we will use the vacuum takeoffs in order to balance the carburetors uh, and make sure that they're all operating in sync with each other anyway guys thank you very much for um, coming by watching this video and supporting me um, if you like what you see then uh, give it a like and um, maybe consider subscribing um, if you want to join me on the socials Facebook Instagram and Twitter the links for all of those are in the description below. Guys, thank you very much. Bye bye now.